Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is 5.30 here in the morning, um, Thursday morning, December the 8th. This is one child to be a survivor to another. One for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And uh, chat room's open there. I did pop the link in there to what we're looking at. Looking at self-esteem tips, 21 self-esteem tips from Spirit Wire. It's talking about self-esteem. Uh, the issues that sort of surround adult survivors of child abuse many times. Not everyone um, who has got low self-esteem has been who have been abused. Lots of people have low self-esteem, and um, you know for many reasons. And um, not doesn't necessarily mean that a person was abused just because they have low self-esteem. But being abused and growing up, of you know, in an abusive environment, it's it's sometimes people do you know carry with them some low self-esteem and confidence issues and whatnot. So I want to take a look at this just for myself and hopefully it's helping somebody else. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You know, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a private citizen paying to do these shows. Actually, I went up to go to a free account, so now I'm just doing my shows here on Blog Talk Radio. And um, so you have to listen to, to my shows, all of my shows, at your own discretion because I'm talking about abuse and abuse is a sensitive subject. You know, it's some people may find it just, you know, distressing. It may bother you. It may trigger survivors, you have to really think about what's good for you to listen to. And if you think the topics of abuse might bother you, um, then you need to turn the show off and listen to something else. It's very important. You want to keep yourself safe. You want to learn how to, you know, how, you know, to know what's good for you to listen to, right? And especially if you are a survivor, right? Because survivors many times, um, adult survivors, you know, they may not even realize what would trigger them, you know, and then listening to certain topics or certain shows like this, like mine or anybody else's, you know, could trigger you. So, yeah, I always post a warning for people that I am talking about abuse and it is very sensitive material, so make sure that you're okay to listen to this, right? Uh, young people under the age of 18, 18 and under, I just ask that you have an adult listen to the show with you, somebody who's older, who's an adult, who can help you make a decision whether or not you should be listening age appropriately because my shows are not for younger children. There's a lot of adult content on my shows, a lot of mature material, adult-oriented material, so make sure that, if you're 18 years of age and un- or under, you know, did you have someone listen to the show with you who's an adult? Like, uh, hopefully you have a parent or caregiver who cares. I know that sometimes that doesn't happen because that's what happened to me. You know, like, you know, I didn't have a parent who cared about what I was doing, but hopefully you've got somebody in your life who's older, who's an adult, who can help you, um, you know, listen to the show with you or one of my shows with you and see if it's age appropriate for you. So younger children is not for younger children at all. And so I post a warning on my shows. Right? So thank you. We'll get right into this this morning. We're looking at uh, self-esteem tips, 21 self-esteem tips from a website, www.spiritwire.com. Spiritwire, all one word, S-P-I-R-I-T-W-I-R-E.com. Uh, self-esteem tips. And they have books and stuff that they sell from their website and stuff. But I just want to look at their self-esteem tips that they had here. Sort of stumbled across this website looking for self-esteem information because I want to do a workshop pretty soon here in Calgary. Um, about self-esteem, right? So I'm just looking through these stuff, and it's helpful for me too. It reminds me to do some of this stuff. Like um, we're we're down on self-esteem tip number five, I think. Uh, yeah, upgrade your physical diet. But yesterday we were talking about, you know, be aware. Number four was be aware of what your monkey mind, the voice of your head, is saying, and that's what they're that's what they're talking about here. They said, widen back, observe your thoughts. If a particular thought isn't kind or isn't serving you, note this and redirect your focus to what you're wanting. This may take a bit of practice, and remember to be kind to yourself as you're gaining awareness and strength, strengthening your will. So, you know, these inner voices, like a lot of times, that's what I was talking about yesterday, these inner voices when I go growing up abused, you know, those voices are still there. And do I, you know, they're from the memories, right? But do I I believe them or buy into them or pay much attention to them anymore? Not really, you know, because I know that none of that stuff is true. And so, but it's taken me five years, really, almost five years to to bolster myself up enough that I don't really, I don't believe that stuff that I was told as a child, right? And because it was just, it was just, you know, pounded into me really that that's, that I was all these things, these horrible things, right? As a child and I I was a rape child and I was no good and I was rotten and I was evil. I deserved to be beaten. I deserved to be treated the way that I was. All this horrible stuff. I was a whore and a slut and all these things. When I was like eight years old, you know, seven years old, five years old, right? And then all the way up through my teen years. So I had to take a lot of verbal abuse and psychological abuse as well as physical abuse and sexual abuse, you know, from my parents. But the sexual abuse happened from one of my siblings. 
And it was uh, it, it definitely affected the the way that I thought about myself, you know. And I hated myself for so many years. I hated my body. I hated my life. I hated I hated the fact that I was a woman because there was abuse in my home. My, my mother was being abused by my dad. Um, and I was well, witnessed of all a lot of that, almost all of it really. Um, you know, it's it was horrible. It was absolutely horrific, and it affected my whole family. It affected my brothers. My brothers were when they were teens really didn't know how to approach girls. They really wanted to go out like on dates and stuff. My older brothers and they didn't have a clue how to approach a woman or how to talk to a girl. And um, because my dad was just abusing my mom all the time, and that's what they grew up seeing, and that's what they grew up witnessing. So they had no clue how to be just this normal guy, you know what I mean? Like so my, teen, my my brothers, when they were in their teens, had all kinds of problems. And they were drug users, and they were abused, and they were just they were having all kinds of issues. And my sister, she had problems too. We all did. Every single one of us had problems in this area. And... Um, you know, with our own sexuality, with our own being, right? And it's it's really difficult to come to come back from that when when it's your life. It's not like I had ten good years growing up, and then one year where things went kind of bad, and then the rest was good. You know, something I was born into. We all were born into this mess that my parents created, and um, that's how we grew up. That's how we 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 lived and learned and and grew up in this really dysfunctional, abusive environment. So, you know, we, it, it's hard sometimes to change these thoughts, to change the way that we feel about ourselves, to change these these methods of thinking and these methods of coping. Well, we can do it, but it takes time, and sometimes it takes another, it takes help, you know. So whether it's a, a therapist or a counselor or a psychotherapist or group support or whatever it is, you know, whatever works for us because we're all different, right? I'm different, everybody's different. What works for me may not work for somebody else. And what works for somebody else may not work for me, right? So we all have to find what works for us and go get some help, you know what I mean? If we can't do it on our own, right? Because it's so important, right, to not let ourselves be destroyed by this and not let ourselves live this horrible life of, you know, I can't I can't uh, participate in life because, you know, I don't belong or because, you know, whatever we're thinking, right? This is stuff that I think, you know, that really that I, that I shouldn't be participating in, in life with, out in, in, in society with people because... You know, I am just a loser, and you know, I just don't count, and I'm just, I'm just stupid, or whatever. You know, whatever the case may be. I already know I'm not a whore. You know what I mean? But um, this is other things, these underlying uh, belief systems that I bought into because I was forced to buy into it when I was a child. Um, that I was just a loser, you know, and I was never ever gonna amount to anything, and I was just always second rate, you know, and never really measured up. And that's really how I grew, up, how I grew up feeling that way. And so when I was in my 20s and I decided to stop doing drugs and start getting my life together as a young adult, um, you know, it was hard for me to go out and do job interviews because I had to, when I was young, I had the same job for nine years. I had a a job that I got when I was just turning 16 years old and I kept that job until I was 24. So I had that job for nine years. But I went to school in the meantime um, for a couple of years, almost three years, to learn how to cook. And so I had to go back out into the into the world and start interviewing and stuff. And, and it, I found it very difficult because I already had these self-esteem issues, these low self-esteem issues and, and confidence issues. But but I thought, you know what, I have to do this. If I'm going to if I'm gonna master this, I'm going to have to just to put myself out there and just be able to take some rejection because it, I was seriously rejected, especially in the chef, um, the industry, the cooking industry, because I was a woman, an older woman, trying to get onto um, hot food preparation lines like just regular kitchens where people cook hot food, you know, like boiler, um, you know, whatever's going on like in the kitchen and on the on the on the line, on the hot food line, right? And that's where I wanted to be and it's mainly a man's world and even today, in two thousand eleven it's still is an issue with a lot of people think that it's just a man's job and it's really you know, there it's really not true. Um women can do that job too. But the thing is is so I was coming from behind the eight ball with my self-esteem stuff anyway, but I thought, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So I sort of pushed myself to force myself throughout my life to make to do these things. So I don't mind going on job interviews. I know that I'm either going to get the job or I'm not. And and is it based on the fact that I'm just no good or I'm a loser? No, it's probably based on my skill levels, or maybe it's the fact that that they didn't won't, that I'm not what they were looking for. You know. So I've got a good sense now as a as an old that, you know, 
that it's not necessarily me, or you know what I mean? It's not. It probably has nothing to do with me. They don't know my past. They don't know my history. <laughs> you know, it's not like these people I go to interview with for jobs and stuff know that I was abused as a child and what I went through. Um, so it's based on skills and also probably just maybe I'm not the fit for the company or whatever the whatever it is that I'm applying for. So I've learned over the years, you know, to to be to to look at things in a more realistic way instead of thinking, oh, they don't like me because I'm they they can see right through me. They can see that I'm useless. They can see that I'm worthless or whatever I might be thinking, right? So we have to change the way we feel about ourselves. We have to change the way we think. We have to watch those voices in our heads and not listen to that negative stuff and really start overriding that negative stuff with positive stuff. Looking at the positives and saying, no, but I can do this. I'm good at this. I'm, you know, I'm nice. I'm pleasant. Whatever we might want to say about ourselves. And look at the positives, too, instead of just always looking at the negatives. I do still look at some of the negatives because I'm trying to grow. If I don't look at some of the negatives, then I'm not going to ever grow. So I, if I think that I could improve on something, then I definitely work on it. So that's why I can on self-improvement because I definitely can improve on a lot of stuff, on everything. So um, I do a lot of self-development. But the thing is, is you know, I, I don't I'm, I don't listen to those voices in my head that, that tell me, you know, from, from childhood that I'm just, that I'm just a loser, that I'm just a whore, that I'm no good, that I'm that I should have died, you know, because my mother was always telling me that that I should have died with the other babies that died, the stillborn babies that she had, uh, because my mother hated me because I was born out of rape, right? And I was the last child born. She did not want me, and she didn't want any of her children, but especially me. By the time I came around, she was just like she had lost her mind, and she was just she was so angry because she was being raped by my dad and forced to have these kids and. She did not want us, and you know. So I grew up knowing this, and she told me to my face, you know, many times, and beat on me, and you know, severely hurt me, saying, you know, what well, you should have died. I should have killed you, and things like this. So I, you know, I grew up with that, and so I thought, no, I'll just kill myself. I'll be, I'll, I'll just do you a favor, and so that's my whole life was about self destruction, and so now, as you know, as an adult, it's all about self development. You know, it's like, okay, let's go the opposite way. That wasn't good. Um, that wasn't my fault, you know what I mean? I don't really take the responsibility for that. But what I do take responsibility for is now. Take responsibility for what I'm doing today. Because it is my responsibility. If I want to make, if I want to succeed or I want to do things in life, I'm responsible for that. I'm going to have to make it happen. And so I realized that and I thought, you know, yeah, it's going to have to be me, so I'm going to have to do some work here, some serious heavy-duty work to get to, to get to do this, you know what I mean? and believe that I can do it. So that's the thing. We have to think about things in a different way, observe what we're thinking, and watch what we're doing so that we're not continuing on in those same old patterns of self-destruction or self or, or self-sabotage, which I was doing for many, 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 many years and still have a tendency to do because I, that's how I grew up, right? I mean, this is my life, you know what I mean? Like, I can't just change who I, my whole core being, you know what I mean, unless I go into denial which I'm not in denial, so therefore that doesn't work for me. I can't just pretend I'm somebody else, you know what I mean? I'm just me, so I have to deal with this stuff, right? So it's like, it's it's a hard road, you know, for a lot of people. and It's hard. I can, if somebody was to say, is it hard for you? I mean, absolutely. Every day is hard for me because every day I know I have the realization that, you know, in the back of my mind is this issue of, um, yeah, I'm just a, a rape child. I'm a whore. I should have died when I was a child. You know, uh, my mother uh, hated me, you know what I mean? Like, And, you know, I was born a raped child and then raped as a child, you know. There's these horrible things that just, you know, they do haunt me, absolutely. And it's because uh, it's reality. It's not. I'm, I can't live in, in some sort of pretend world and I, I'm, I'm just facing reality, right? So part of me still feels like that, you know. And the other part of me says, no, you survived and, you know, you're doing really well. So the other part of me says, we we can do this. And the other part of me is stronger than the other part. So now, like I was saying yesterday, I have a lot more better days now than I have bad days, even though I still have some pretty bad days. But but for the most part, I have way more better days nowadays than I did. And that's a sign of improvement. That's a sign of progress. And so that's what we need to do is is really keep track of this stuff and monitor it. And if we're not making progress, you know, then we need to get some help. You know, make sure we get some help, reach out, do something. Um, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about joining a like a women's center. I'm actually getting ready to do that, and also to get involved with uh, crisis support and stuff like that. Plus, I'm you know I'm also I know and I'm aware that if I need to phone a crisis line, I can phone a crisis line. 
you know, there's, it, it's not, it, you know, this is not something that doesn't cross my mind. You know what I mean? Um, it's a hard road for us, for survivors of abuse, right? But we can we can do certain things to help ourselves, and that's why, you know, these self esteem tips are really good. Number five is upgrade your physical diet. They said uh, processed foods contain very little nutritional value when compared to raw organic fruits and vegetables, and eat fresh produce rather than processed foods whenever possible. Drink plenty of water, fresh juices, and smoothies instead of caffeinated beverages or energy drinks, and add uh, nutrient dense superfoods to your diet. It said, when you take care of your body by supplying it with good nutrients, you will naturally feel better and have more energy. And then we'd feel better about things. You know, it's so true. Like, that's one of my issues that I'm working on because I have never taken care of my body. I've never taken care of myself, period. Um, even though I don't, you know, I don't do drugs now. My, You know, I smoke and that's my that's my drug of, of choice right now and it's legal, thank God. But the thing is, is I'm trying to quit because I've been smoking since I was 12 years old and it's taken a toll on my body and I need to quit smoking. And it's too expensive and I can't afford it. And so there's many reasons why I got to quit. Um, upgrading my physical diet. Like, I've never really taken care of myself. And I did drugs until I was 21 years old. And, and I used to do, like, heavy-duty drugs, you know, like stuff that was just extremely bad for your body. And, um, you know, I felt like real, like, like garbage. By the time I came out of that, I'm like 20, 20, 21 years old. Plus I had a couple, like, three car accidents. Two, two were mine and one was somebody else's. And my body was just, and plus I'd been abused as a child and then raped and tortured. and um, I never cared about my body. You know what I mean? It was like, you know what, my parents tried to kill me. My brother tried to kill me or could have killed me. Um, I've, you know, I've been there through way too many hor- horrific things. So I didn't care about my body because I wasn't shown how to care about my body. And when I was young, I didn't, I didn't want to be a woman. So it's not like I tried to self-injure and try to mutilate myself because I was a woman because I'd already been mutilated by my parents and my brother. But the thing is, is inside, in the picture inside of my mind was that, you know, I was just this wounded, ugly, disgusting thing and I did not want to be a woman, you know what I mean, because of the sexual abuse going on in my home between my mom and my dad, my, my dad raping my mother and also just the, 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 the rape and sexual assault from my brother. So really... The internal picture of myself and in my mind was really bad. So by the time I came to be a teenager, I really didn't mind destroying my body. You know, I was like, no, I don't care about myself anyway. Like I'm just, I'm just worthless. I'm just, you know, I just deserve to die, and I should just, I'm in hell anyway. So what does it really matter? So I really didn't take care of myself, and I used to hurt myself and self-injure quite a bit, and didn't even make it look like it was on purpose, but actually it was. So the car accidents were not on purpose; those were accidents. But the thing is, is I do other things. Another friend of mine was involved in it too because we were both abused as children. We were both in the same mindset. And so I did not take care of myself as a child or even as a young person or as an adult. I wasn't taken care of by my parents and, you know, was beaten and, you know, and hurt and not taken to the hospital. Of course, my parents all have lost us, so they didn't They didn't care. For, you know what I mean? Like my mother's, my grandmother killed one of her sons, my mother's brother. And my mom was, you know, witness to it. My mom... You know, death was just something that my mom was just, uh, you know, accustomed to. My mom didn't, you know, she wasn't going to get us any help. If, you know, she nearly killed me a couple times and didn't bother to get me any help. And then one time I um, I was very, very sick and, and a couple times I was injured quite badly just in accidents and stuff. And she, she didn't care. She just let me suffer on with what was going on. And my dad had injured me one time and ripped my hip out of place and um, he was in a beating that he was dishing out. And um, they didn't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they didn't care. My sister tore her eye, her eye on a fence one time and actually ripped her eyeball, um, sliced it with a, a metal um, piece on a fence, on a barbed wire fence. And they uh, they weren't going to take her to the hospital. I mean, she was walking. She walked to the house and her eye was like bleeding and cut, and and she couldn't see. And they were like they were just going to leave her. They weren't going to take her to the hospital. And a neighbor actually was over and, and was like, "You have to take your daughter to the to the, to the doctor." Like or the hospital, you can't just leave her with her eye cut like that, bleeding and stuff. My parents were like, "Well, you know, what do you want us to do about it?" Because they didn't care, right? And my the, the neighbor was like, "If you don't take her, I'm reporting you guys," you know, because my parents were brought up on charges, right? So, um, so and she and the neighbor says, "I'll take I'll take her and I'll make a report," you know, and they you'll you know, and actually they should have because we would have been removed from the home. But the thing is, oh well, there we go. So, so you know, I, none of us took care of ourselves. It's not in my family to do that, 
to take care of ourselves. Two of my brothers killed himself. Um, one of my brothers was murdered, so that doesn't really count. But two of my brothers killed themselves, and uh, my other sisters really don't take that great care of themselves. So none of us do, so it's not just me. It's just a family thing, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm trying to learn how to do that, to take care of myself and to eat right and to get proper sleep and rest, which lately I've been doing a little bit more of lately just because I'm really realized that I was just so tired and I needed to, I needed to start going to bed at a decent time. Um, you know, drinking lots of water. Um, you know, I still drink lots of coffee and stuff. I love my coffee and my cigarettes, right? So I'm trying to kind of switch that out with some healthier things during the day. Um, it's hard if you're not used to doing it. This is something I'm working on because I know if my physical body felt better, I'd probably feel a lot better because I'd be able to do more things, you know. I'd be able to, I'd have more energy it, it, to do things, more energy, right? Um, that's my pro. And, I'm fa- you know, false energy just doesn't count, like those caffeine drinks and all that. That's not, you know, that's not healthy, right? So it's it's, it's something I'm working on right now is trying to, to, to treat my body better and to feed myself better and to provide some better nutrients. I have one of my friends who's always, um, she's usually here with me on the shows, but she's always reminding me to take my vitamins because I, I won't even take vitamins. Like I just won't do anything I'm supposed to be doing for my body. But, and so, you know, she's always telling me, no, you take your vitamins and make sure you, you take your vitamins at least because she knows I'm doing very little to take care of myself. So, um, yeah, I'm working on this. You know, this is something that's still a work in progress. But it's, it, it's, it's good because at least I'm working on it. You know what I mean? It's, it's good that I'm not actually trying. Number six is stop comparing yourself to others. You're not supposed to be like anyone else. They said, you are you, and you are the only one who can be you, and your perspectives, gifts, and value are exclusively yours. You're a unique expression of God, they said here. Revel in it. If you want something to measure yourself, compare how you were yesterday to how you are today, and be kind. Um, that's so true, you know, comparing ourselves to others. Like, I, I, I talk a lot about that because, you know, growing up abused, like, of course, I'm going to compare myself to others, you know, like, like, just, I feel so much of a low life because I grew up in this dysfunctional home, in a um, poverty level, you know, situation. Like we were not wealthy. We didn't have any money. I didn't have <clears throat> didn't have any clothes. You know, didn't have anything that to you know. Just, it wasn't even middle class. Like we were low, like right at poverty level. And I didn't feel like I was all that poor because I mean I had food to eat and we had electricity. You know, I mean, grew up in a city. Um, we were just at the poverty line, so we didn't have a lot of excess stuff and we didn't have a lot of, you know. Extra stuff. My parents, you know, tried to do the best they could as far as that went, but you know what I mean. Like they just didn't have the money. They had a bunch of kids and they hated each other, and they just didn't have the money to be buying a whole bunch of stuff for us, which is fine. I don't even care about that stuff. But the issue today is that, you know, here I sit today, and most people, by most people's standards, you know, people would look at me and say, "Well, you're not doing all that great." I mean, look at you, like, like look at this place you live in. Look at this stuff. Look, look what you have, and look what you've accomplished in your life, you know, they might take a look and be kind of hard on the situation, uh, comparing themselves against me and say, well, you know, well, we have a house, and we have cars, and we have kids in school, and we have kids in, 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 in university, and we're paying for that, and, you know, if I started to compare myself to other people, I would just, I would have to just sit down and give up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I can't compare myself to somebody else, you know what I mean? And I don't. Um, they're in that situation, that's great, I'm happy for them, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, there's no jealousy going on, you know what I mean? The issue is, is if I stop to compare myself to other people because of what they have and, you know, that they, oh, yeah, they have a house and it's got this and it's got that, you know, then, of course, I'm going to be down and, and depressed because I'm going to be comparing myself to somebody else. That's really stupid. I don't do that, actually. I really don't compare myself to anybody. I used to as a child, as a young person you know, growing up because I, I knew kids who lived in these big, huge, beautiful homes and I thought... You know, I wonder what their lives are like. You know, they're probably not being beaten and raped and tortured. Um, you know, they're probably getting care and love, and they probably were, hopefully. But some of them were probably being abused, too. But this is the thing. A lot of them actually were being abused. But some of the other kids in the school lived in a little bit richer neighborhood and down, this, down the road from me. There was a, a few blocks over, there was quite a wealthy neighborhood. Um, sort of the dividing line was this one busy street. And on the other side of that street, it started to get a little bit better as you walk down it started to get richer and richer, and you, the homes were just uh, elaborate. And so I used to go over there sometimes, walk over there and check them out. And to look, some of those kids that I went to school with lived there, and I knew who they were, and I could just see, you know, the difference in their lifestyle compared to mine. Like, I went for three years with no new clothes at all and just wearing my sister's clothes. 
uh, through the the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And that's because my mother didn't buy me any clothes. And um, finally, finally, I got some clothes when I was went into the to the ninth grade. I finally got a new a, a pair of sh- uh, a pair of slacks and a top and a bra. <laughs> that's the clothes that I got for the ninth grade. Um, literally, I had absolutely nothing to wear. You know what I mean? Like I had a pair of jeans couple of t-shirts like I was a couple of little shirts you know that was it and then if I wanted anything nice I had to take it out of my sister's closet because my sister lots of clothes and uh but my sister would save her lunch money and she would she would she would scrimp and save her lunch money and buy herself a shirt like my sister was um very concerned about what you know how she looked and whatnot so she would save her lunch money and buy a shirt and I would take my lunch money and buy drugs with it you know or whatever right so that's the difference between me and my sister but um yeah, this is the thing. Um, I don't compare myself with other people, you know, because people don't know where I've been. People looking down on my situation might say, somebody looking in might say, well, you know, you're not doing all that great living. You're like over $20,000 in debt and you have no car, you have no kids, you have, what do you have? You know what I mean? you got nothing, right? You don't own anything. And and they might look at me that way and if they did, I wouldn't want to know them anyway. You know what I mean? Um, because if somebody doesn't, look at me for who I am and just like me for who I am, that I, they don't need to be in my life anyway, you know what I mean? So I don't have any problems with that, you know what I mean? But I could I, easily if I wanted to let that bother me because I work in, uh, uh, most likely I, I have corporate tech jobs. I'm always kind of working in in in, in um, business, you know? And so I know that these people have money and they got homes and cars and yachts, but I also know that they have problems too. And that's just because they have a house and cars and maybe a yacht someplace or some sort of, you know, vacation property doesn't mean they don't have problems, right? Because people, this is what life is all about. It's about, it's about, it's about learning how to cope and roll with the with the problems, because there will be something going on. And so, you know, nobody's life is perfect, right? These people, you know, they might look at my situation and think, oh, feel sorry for me, but really they shouldn't be because I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad to be here. You know what I mean? I'm happy to be alive. I celebrate, you know, each day now because, especially with my sweetheart, right, because he's terminally ill and he's only got so much time left, he's, he's end stage. So I don't worry about cars and houses and yachts, you know. What I'm doing is just getting through the day and, and trying to make the best of each day as they come because my sweetheart only has so much time left, you know. And, like, I only have so much time left. How, how do we know how much time we have? We've got to enjoy the day for what we have, you know, and not compare ourselves to somebody else and say, well... By this age, I wanted to have this because I used to do that when I was young, like especially a teenager, you know, especially a late teen. I thought, man, when I'm in my 20s, I'd like to have a house, and especially after I got off the drugs, you know, even when I was on the drugs and something like that, you know, I want to, I want to have a house and I want to be able to do things. You know what I mean? And especially growing up the way that I did, kind of poverty level and just sleeping on the floor, or sleeping wherever, you know, and just just being mistreated and you know didn't have anything. So you know, it's so. So it sort of meant something to me to think that I would like to have a house. and But now I'm like, you know what, I don't even care about that stuff. Like, who cares? Like, what, what's really important to me is people. Because material stuff can't buy me any happiness. It doesn't matter how much stuff I have, it doesn't buy me any happiness at all. But what buys me happiness is inner peace and stuff. And I found out what was really important to me. You know what I mean? And my, and my friends are really important to me. My sweetheart's really important to me. You know, this... What I can offer to other people in this life is really important to me. Not whether I have a house or cars or all this stuff, like whatever. If I have a car, well, that's great. I used to have a car, you know. I don't have a car now, but I used to. Uh, but I've never had a house, you know. And I wouldn't even know what to do with one if I if I got one. I wouldn't be comfortable in it at all, because I'm only comfortable in one room. Uh, because I'm not, I'm not really. It's just not my cup of tea to be trying to live in a bunch of rooms. You know what I mean? Um, so I wouldn't probably be comfortable in a house anyway. You know, um, it have you know what I mean. The the only thing I want to do later is have a bed and breakfast, which I was talking about before. But that's because I want to share it with other people. Right. So thanks everybody for being here. We'll we'll pick up here tomorrow on number uh, not tomorrow actually. I'll, I'll be on tomorrow night. Child abuse prevention is up to us ten o'clock p.m. Saturday I'll be on talk um, at talk dot org www dot talk t a a l k dot org. Saturday, Sunday, there's a marathon, 24-hour marathon going on to stop and end child sexual abuse. And I'm one of the panelists on at 10 o'clock uh, p.m. on Saturday night. I hope you can tune in for that. There's there's so many people starting Saturday morning. runs all the way through Sunday. 
be sure and check that out. That is going to be amazing. There's going to be so many people. Over 40 speakers are from around the world. Uh, I hope that you will check that out. But I'll be on that show, uh, on that on that um, broadcast on um, um, Saturday night. And then Sunday I'll be on my show here. But um, thanks, everybody, for being here. You know, I appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. If you need something, you know, and, and no one's around, and, and I'm not around, nobody's around, can't get a hold of anybody, you make sure you phone a crisis line. Like, you do something yourself here, and you keep yourself well, and you treat yourself right. You know what I mean? Like, do not allow yourself to go down and be be destroyed by this. Like, we have every right to, to have a good life. It is literally going to be up to us. You know, it was up to my brothers to make the right choice for themselves. Two of my brothers killed themselves. And, you know, they didn't make the right choice for themselves. Right? That's very, very sad. I was heading down that same road. Don't do that. Get some help. Reach out, get some help, whatever way it is, you know, and if you have to, call a crisis line, but do something. You, you keep yourself here and you get some help because we certainly deserve it. Don't ever give up, right? Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you soon.